Hey guys, Danny Johnson here, and today we're going to be talking about summarizing or dewinterizing your boat. So basically, when you put the boat away, a lot of times it will be winterized, and precautions will be taken to make sure that the boat does okay sitting for extended periods of time, and also in cold conditions. So the first uh, advice that I'd have is try to contact the person who did winterize the boat. Now, this might be difficult, especially maybe you don't know who did it last. And also, if you call them and ask them what they did to winterize the boat, sometimes, like in our case, uh, they aren't very forthcoming because they want you to bring the boat in and pay for the service. And so they also told us we needed a new impeller, new batteries, all kinds of new things. Um, so you do have to be careful about that. But if you're mechanically inclined enough, as you see in this video, you can do what's shown in this video, then this is something that you could most likely do on your own. So if the boat's been sitting for a while, you'll wanna put some fresh gasoline in it. Uh, maybe when it was winterized, some stable additive was put into the fuel to keep it from uh, deteriorating, but it's always a good idea to put some fresh fuel in it as well. So we'll talk about some of these things that uh, is common when winterizing the boat, and you'd basically just do the opposite. Um, of course, one of the first things you wanna do with any engine is check the oil level and the clarity of it. So uh, just like any car engine, there will be a dipstick here. Usually it's yellow. And when you pull that out, you'll be able to see the condition of the oil and the oil level. So in this case, the oil still looked very clear, very good. You're also looking for any clumps of uh, white cloudy condensation, but it looked pretty good. Uh, next, you wanna pull up to where you're gonna have a water source from a garden hose. And so the way a boat engine works is it uses the lake's water to cool the engine. And so you cannot run the boat out of the lake unless you hook it up to a garden hose and have water going or you'll blow the head gasket and uh, ruin the engine. So in this case, we had a socket that uh, goes onto this attachment. So you'll find the attachment in the engine bay this one luckily was clearly uh, marked and uh, it should be pretty obvious because it's going to have where a hose can thread into it as you can see here there's a seal down in there just like a garden hose attachment would have and so uh, a tip with this as well is as you're screwing this in uh, twist the hose and not the fitting so take the hose and twirl it a few times so that when you put it in here uh, you can twist the garden hose um, that way you're not uh, ruining the pipe that's attached to the actual boat. So as you see here, we're twisting the hose itself to get that to thread in. Uh, so as we turn the hose on, we're going to look for any leaks within the engine. And so uh, with the hose connected, you would be able to see water coming out if any of these plugs were undone. Now the plugs are gonna be different, I'm sure, for every engine. In this case, uh, you can see these brass ones that are in the side here. There's two of them. Uh, this one has one on each side of the engine and then different models are a little different, but there's the brass uh, plug that you can see right there in the engine block. So you just wanna make sure that that is in and tight and look for any water coming out of it when you turn on the hose. And it'll be pretty apparent that water would just go down into the sump below the engine. And uh, so try to find a manual or something that would let you know where the plugs are on your particular engine. And then uh, if not, uh, when you run it, you'll definitely see where it's leaking. But during the winterization process, they may have removed these plugs and then not put them in tightly. So it's something to check. It's also probably a very good idea to put some water down in here and make sure that the bilge pump works because you want to definitely make sure that works before going on the lake. So next you'll turn the water on at the spout. And something very important is when they winterize boats, they usually will fill the engine block with some uh, marine antifreeze. And it's not as uh, toxic as automotive one, but it still is illegal to dump it in the lake and you don't uh, want it to come out unless it's gonna go where you can collect it. So you can see here, as we turn the hose on, you'll see that purple tint coming out. And so that is the coolant the uh, antifreeze that they had put in there. And there wasn't that much, as you can see, it cleared out pretty quick, but it still would be illegal to uh, put the boat in and just have it dump. Now, the next thing is the batteries. This case, we have two batteries and a selector switch for both of them up here, but that's something that you don't wanna just go drop the boat in the lake and find out that your batteries are dead. So it's a good idea to start the boat at your house like we did here, because in our case, yeah. Um, neither of the batteries had enough uh, juice to start the uh, the engine. So we jump started it with two different cars just because we had two sets of jumper cables. 
I'll put a link to where and how to jump start things uh, if you need to know how to do that too. But this is something very important. You don't want to get all the way to the lake to find out uh, that it's uh, has dead batteries. But and just remember, you'll be having to jump start the boat at the lake with another boat or a jump box. So keep that in mind. But with it running, the water will now come out the exhaust. Okay, so that's how these boats are designed. And um, keep in mind as well, you have the propellers and everything here, so make sure that it's in neutral. But uh, next thing you're going to want to do with everybody standing clear, the hose out of the way, is put the boat into drive and make sure that everything spins. So do not stand close to these, stand back. Of course, if these came off, they would be very deadly. So be careful about that. And then you wanna stop it and then put it in reverse and make sure that it works in both directions. So you don't need to run the boat too long, but uh, just enough to know that everything works like this. Um, also something for winterizing in the process is they will fog the engine or they will spray some oil inside of it and that keeps everything from rusting. So you might get some smoke in the beginning and if you do, it's okay, just let it burn out. Uh, at the same time, you don't want to be dumping that in the lake. So another good reason to be running it outside um, of the lake. So anyway, um, these are just a few of the winterization and dewinterizing or summarizing processes. Also check the condition of the trailer tires, especially if it's been sitting out in the sun in a storage lot or if the tires are low. If the tires are low when you go to pick it up, pump them up before you move it. If you have uh, flat tires that have been dried out, that can tear the sidewall as you move the trailer on a flat tire. And uh, just in general, you don't want to have flat spots and uh, all kinds of things from it sitting. Also remember, everything that goes underwater will have the grease washed away. So with wheel bearings and anything, any joints, any kind of connections for the boat, you'll want to lubricate those, pack the wheel bearings with grease and all that. That could be a whole nother video. Uh, make sure in the whole process that you put your drain plug in before you drop the boat into the lake and um, you know just do everything else that you're supposed to be doing we'll be making more movies on how to uh, launch a boat and things to check for how to remove the straps and, and those kind of things yeah. but make sure as part of your check here that you have the drain plug and you have the tool to tighten it um, that's the last thing you want to do is sink your boat as soon as you get to the lake make sure that the trim is up so you're not dragging the prop or the drive on there at all and uh, look around on every hose that you can find and just make sure that everything is tight they take off a lot of coolant hoses when they add the uh, different antifreeze and things like that so basically anywhere you can find a, a hose make sure that it's tight and that uh, it's been replaced properly uh, so just look down underneath the engine as well. There's a lot of attachments. The water pumps on the front of the engine here. And so you just want to make sure that everything is tight, that there's no leaks, nothing's going to pop off. And all of the tools that you use during this job, make sure you have with you in case you need them out at the lake. Uh, you can go ahead and disconnect your water source when the boat has been turned off and uh, make sure that that's uh, connected again so you don't have water spewing uh, through that as well. And... Um, just look everything over the best no. that you can.